errors arise unexpectedly and can result in disrupting the normal flow of execution. This is something that every programmer or tester faces at one point or the other while coding and testing. And the main motto of the testers is to debug the error and resolve it. In this video, I will talk about what are exceptions in Selenium and how to handle them. Hey everyone, this is Neha from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session on exceptions in Selenium. Let's take a look at the agenda for the session. First and foremost, I will tell you what exception handling is. After that, I will give you an overview on exceptions hierarchy and also talk about the difference between checked and unchecked exceptions. After understanding these fundamentals, let's hook into the programming part and learn the basic syntax of exception handling. Next up, I will be explaining you the types of exceptions in depth and finally, I will wrap up the session by talking about various methods of exception handling along with examples. Without wasting any further time, let's get straight into the module. First, let's understand what is exception. An exception is an event which occurs during the execution of the program that disrupts the normal flow of the program's instructions or in simple words, any issue which makes your test case stop in the course of execution is known as an exception. When an exception occurs, the normal flow of program halts and the exception object is created. The program then tries to find someone that can handle the race exception. The exception object contains a lot of debugging information such as method hierarchy, the line number where the exception occurred, the type of the exception, etc. So when you start working with Selenium Web Driver, you will come across different exceptions based on the code you write. The same code sometimes work properly and sometimes it will not. You will see some or the other exceptions when you execute your scripts. So whenever you develop any scripts, you will try to give the best quality of the code that works perfectly fine. But unfortunately, sometimes exceptions come as side effects to the scripts that we are developing and that fails. And that's why handling an exception is very important. So you can see here the flow of the exception handling wherein first problem occurs, then it creates an exception, throw an exception and finally handle it. Simple. Having understood this, let's move further and look at the exceptions hierarchy. All exceptions and error types are subclasses of class throwable, which is the base class of the hierarchy. One branch is heated by exception, this class is used for exceptional conditions that user programs should catch. Another branch such as error are used by the Java runtime systems to indicate the errors that are associated with. So basically under exceptions there are two types. One is checked and the other one is unchecked. So let's see the difference between these two exceptions. That is checked versus unchecked exception. So a checked exception means it is an exception that is checked by the compiler at the time of compilation and an unchecked exception occurs at the time of execution. So basically checked exceptions are called as compile time exceptions and unchecked exceptions are called as runtime exceptions. So talking about the checked exceptions, these exceptions cannot be simply ignored. The programmer should handle these exceptions in order to maintain the normal flow of execution. Whereas runtime exceptions can be ignored and there won't be any much difference in the flow of execution of the program. So this is the main difference between the checked and unchecked exceptions. Now let's move further and understand the basic example of a Selenium exception. So this is how the structure of an exception looks like. You will create a class and inside the main method you will write a try block wherein you will write the code that can raise exception and inside the catch block what you will do. You will write the code that has to execute. That is, the code that raises an exception will be included in the try block. That is, in the try block, the code throws an exception, and later, to continue with the normal execution flow, it will be handled in the catch block. Simple. I'll demonstrate the exact working and how the try and catch block works in the next few minutes. For now, let's move further and see the different types of exceptions. So these are some of the types of exceptions. First one, web driver exception. This exception comes when we try to perform any action on the non-existing driver. Say you have a Chrome driver, but you are trying to perform action on a Mozilla Firefox driver that is Geeko driver, then this exception will be raised. Next, no such element exception. This exception is thrown when the web driver does not find the element in the DOM structure. That is, 
if you are not able to locate a particular element then it will say no such element exception that is that element is not present that is the reason it will throw no such element exception next no such frame exception so say you want to perform an action that is switching between the frames and you are not able to do that because the child frame is not present or parent frame is not able to navigate to the child frame in such cases frame exception will be raised that is no such frame exception will be raised next we have no alert present exception so this exception is basically when we try to perform an action that is either accept or dismiss which is not required at a required place it throws an exception next we have timeout exception so this exception is thrown when a command does not complete or it does not complete the task in a given amount of time say you have declared implicitly wait for 10 seconds and also you have given explicitly wait for 5 seconds and if the page is not able to load within that particular time frame then it says timeout exception now let's move further and understand how an exception is thrown and how to handle all these different five types of exceptions with the help of an example so first i have created a class called exception handling and inside my main method i have first launched my chrome driver that is a chrome driver because i want a chrome driver to launch my google chrome and navigate through a particular given website link so that is the reason the very first step that i do is i launch my chrome driver and this is the path where i have saved my chrome driver and next i'm simply navigating through google.com and i'm using thread.sleep to sleep for 2000 that is 2 milliseconds and now i am finding an element by name that is something like fake dot click now this element is not present so what it will do it will throw an exception called as no such element exception obviously because this thing is nowhere present in the google.com so that is a reason it will throw now let's see how it will throw the exception you can see chrome driver launched google chrome navigated through google.com and nothing is happening why because exception is being raised here so you can see it throwed an exception telling no such element that is unable to locate the element yes exactly it's telling method name the name that is my name is my identifier that is my method and selector is fake so it's not able to find any element over here now say i want to handle it how will i do that okay now say i want to handle the exception that it threw so what i'll do i'll use the try block and catch block so in the try block i'll write the code that will throw an exception so you remember this code itself threw an exception telling it's not able to find a method called name and a selector called fake so i will write it inside my try block so i will catch an exception called no such element exception e and inside that i will print element is not found and hello also and again outside the try block i want to check whether the normal flow of the execution is being carried or not so that is the reason what i am doing i am again printing a statement here even outside the try catch block simple now let's run and check the output so again chrome driver launched google chrome navigated through google.com and now we'll see what happened did it throw the exception no it just said whatever is there in the catch block that is element is not found and it printed hello two times because first time inside the catch block and the second time outside try catch to ensure that the normal flow of the execution is not interrupted yes this is how you can handle the exceptions so now we learned about the no such element exception now let's move further and see the other exceptions as well before that let me tell you how to handle an exception that is what are the various methods to handle exceptions so we have try catch throw throws and finally so these are the five different methods to handle an exception so talking about the try as you already saw it is used to specify a block where we should place an exception code simple just now you saw how we did that next catch this block is mainly used to handle the exception so whatever exception is thrown by the try block will be handled in this catch block simple next we have throws this is used to throw an exception i'll show you how this will work as well so basically throws is used to throw the exception 
So even after handling an exception in the catch block, if you try to throw the particular exception, it will obviously throw. No matter whether catch has handled it or not, it will throw an exception despite of handling it. Next we have throws. This is used to declare an exception. Suppose say I am using something like thread dot sleep or something. If I do not declare the exception, for example, say interrupted exception, it will not let us to continue with the normal flow of the execution. So it is a must that you should declare an exception using throws whenever you are using some statements like thread dot sleep or something as such. Next you have finally. This is used to execute the important code of the program. Suppose assume that you have handled an exception using try catch, but even though it's not getting handled and you also have some important code to execute. In that case, you will use finally block to make sure that the important part of the code is always executed. No matter what, either the exception is handled, not handled anything, the finally block code will always get executed. So that's the main speciality of this. Now I hope you got a clear idea regarding try catch throw throws and finally let's see along with an example. Okay now let me consider the same example and tell you one thing. Okay now that you know I have handled an exception. So there is no disruption in the flow of execution. Now I will do one thing. I will use throw of fees that is I'm throwing an exception irrespective of the catch block is handling exception. It will still throw the exception. That is this one. Why? Because I want to throw the exception. Very simple. Let's check the output. So again, Google Chrome was launched. So you can see here first it printed element is not found and hello as well. After that, as I'm using throw a fee, that is, I'm throwing an exception, it said no such element. That is unable to locate this particular element. Correct? So it's throwing a complete exception of this irrespective of whether the catch block has handled the exception or not. If I use throw it will still throw the exception. So that's how throw is used. And as I have already told throws is used to declare the exception. I'm using thread dot sleep here and if I remove this you can see there's an error. So what's the error? It's telling to add throws declaration that will be interrupted exception. So this is how throws is used to declare the interrupted exception. Now say you have handled the exception and you're also throwing the exception. Okay. Now let's see how the no alert present exception will be raised. So now what I'm doing here, I'm just navigating through google.com and inside the try blog, I'm simply trying to switch to an alert and trying to accept it. As I have mentioned you before, accept and dismiss are the alerts if it is being used at the wrong place, it will throw an exception. And though I'm handling it in the catch block, telling no alert present exception, and I'm printing the stack trace. Though I'm catching it, it will still throw an exception. Let's see the output. Okay, so you can see here that exception was being thrown and it said no such alert. So this is how this exception is thrown. If you want to handle it, you can again handle it with the help of try catch. That's so simple. Next, we will see no such frame exception. Here I'm doing nothing. I'm simply switching to a window and I'm closing the driver. Let's run the program and check the output. It will obviously say no such window exception. Yes, you can see that. It's telling no such window. So these are some of the types of exception again. If you want to switch to some frame that is not present, then again it will say no such frame exception. Now let's run and check the output. Yes, you can see that it's telling no frame element found by name or ID that is fail. Yes, so you learned about no such element exception, no such frame exception. No such window, no alert present. So basically, these are the different types of exceptions that occurs when you're working with Selenium Web Driver, and that should be handled in order to continue with the normal flow of the execution. Else, it will disrupt the normal flow, and the program execution will not be happening in a proper way. And there are various methods to handle, like you have try, catch, throw, throws, finally, etc. So I hope you understood what are exceptions. 
what are the different types of exceptions that can occur when you're working with selenium and what are the various methods to handle these exceptions i hope you understood these concepts so that was all about today's session if you wish to know more about selenium you can check out the edureka course on selenium certification training and if you have any queries in regards to this video you can comment in the comment section below and we will reply back and resolve your query at the earliest so that's all for the session thank you and have a nice day i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more Happy learning!